So what is an iconic picture? A picture other photographers worship? A timeless photo? What does it actually take to make a picture that has such an impact on viewers and becomes iconic? Imagine you are in the streets of a city you have never been as a documentary photographer on your first assignment. You are hired to photograph a 13 year old girl living in the streets making money as a prostitute. Going through the complete work of Mary Ellen Mark made me realize you can make your audience connect with something they have never experienced. Mary Ellen Mark was that kind of photography master and she not only convinced me, but she helped to change the scope of modern photography. How did she do it? Here are five lessons that will explain the way Mary Ellen Mark photographed and the steps she took to make some of her most iconic images. You can easily follow them and adapt for your photography. Lesson number one, spend enough time with your subject. It seems like the golden age of social documentary photography ran its course with not so many young photographers building on foundations laid by such great photographers like Anne Cartier Bresson or Dale M. Eugene Smith. The reason is that it just doesn't take two days to master. Spending time with your subject is important, but spending enough time to connect with your subject is what is crucial. A month in a ward in a mental hospital or forcing yourself into brothels, that's what it takes if you want to become the king of the hill. Mary Ellen had a gift of making a connection with people. I think really what Mary Ellen tried to do was to bring awareness of the people that don't have a voice. The unfamous, she called them. Lesson number two, gather a lot of material for your project. When Mary Ellen liked her subject, she didn't settle with just one photo session. For example, when photographing a circus in India, it took her more than six months and 18 different circuses to complete that project about 18 times more than what I thought my circus project might take. This leads to lesson number three. Quantity leads to quality. Mary Ellen shot more than two million frames during her life. When you take into account that she was taking pictures over the span of 50 years, it is more than 100 frames every single day. I actually have a hard time remembering when I took 100 pictures in one day. That reminds me of a story I found in a book Atomic Habits by James Clear. In this story, a photography professor splits his film photography students into two groups. One group was supposed to be graded solely on the amount of work, how many images they produced, and the other only on the excellence of their work. They were supposed to provide just one photograph. What happened was that all the best photos were produced in the quantity group. Stephen King once said, don't wait for the muse. Your job is to make sure the muse knows where you're going. If he does know, I assure you that sooner or later he will start showing up. Lesson number four, be prepared for rejections. Mary Ellen wasn't easily discouraged. As in one of her projects photographing prostitutes in India, even though she was rejected many times, she returned again and again and eventually she was allowed to enter and photograph. Well, where there is a will, there is a way. In the kind of work I do, access has always been essential. I just went there boldly, and the first time, of course, someone stole my dress book, and it would knock me over. And it, but I went back, I went back and back and back. And finally I met this woman named Saroja, and from then on, things just opened up. Lesson number five. Adapt to times you live in right now. I sometimes have this romantic idea, I will do it the way Robert Frank did it back then and that will get me into the similar position he was. But what worked back then for people like Robert Frank or Anne Cartier Bresson won't necessarily work for you right now. Each period of time has its own specifics. Even though photography magazines are less likely to support photography essays of unfamous subjects, that's how Mary Ellen Mark used to call her subjects, that doesn't mean it's impossible. Yes, when looking at the magazines and stories they cover nowadays, we can see the trends shifting more towards sensationalism, health, diet, and celebrity journalism. But during the times Mary Ellen Mark published her work, there were no such things like crowdfunding or Instagram accounts or channel memberships 
which gather people who can support the work you do. So spend enough time with your subject. Adapt to times you live in right now. Be prepared for rejections. Gather a lot of materials since quantity leads to quality. If there is one extra idea we can take from Mary Ellen's work, it would be her absolute obsession with photography. To be able to connect with her subjects and gain their trust. Never pass judgment on people and be able to present the situation how it was. I believe those are the qualities of a great documentary photographer. Key to a successful long career in photography is just to, to stay inspired and, and keep doing your work and um, keep keep doing good work and strong work and powerful work and that's the key to a long and successful career in photography. It is still hard to believe single documentary photographer was able to take so many iconic pictures. Exploring different worlds of photography masters is important because they can help us so much during our photography journey. Just be aware I have only showed you a fraction of her work and if you really want to bring your photography to another level, you must see more of her amazing work. In this video I talk about her complete work and the book her husband put together last year. I think you will find some amazing inspiration there. Thank you for watching.